Around 260 BCE, King Hieron II of Syracuse in Sicily had a problem. He had commissioned the construction of the Syracusia, which, at 4,064 tons, was one of the largest ships ever built. But, despite the heroic efforts of hundreds of men on the ends of ropes, he had been unable to launch what had become a breached monster. But then, a saviour stepped forward. With an ingenious arrangement of pulleys and levers, this man single-handedly launched the Syracusia without even breaking a sweat. The man's name was Archimedes. After launching the Syracusia, he is reported to have told King Hieron, Give me a place to stand, and I will move the earth. Events like this made Archimedes a legend in his own lifetime, and have established him as the greatest inventor of ancient times. Like many of the ancient thinkers of the early Greek period, little is known about the life of Archimedes. A biography was written by a follower named Heraclides, but this has not survived. Such basic facts, including whether he was married or had children, are unknown. Greek and Roman biographies that were produced in the centuries after Archimedes' death focus more on his war machinery than on the personal details of his life. Archimedes was born in 287 BCE in Syracuse in Sicily, which, at the time, was a Greek colony. A frontier town, Syracuse was wedged between Rome and Carthage, which were at war with each other. As a young man, Archimedes travelled to Alexandria in Egypt to further his education. There, he was exposed to the teachings of the philosopher Aristotle, the geometrist Euclid, and the astrologist Hipparchus. It is a near certainty that he rubbed shoulders with Eratosthenes, who measured the circumference of the world to within 4% of what we acknowledge today. In addition to gaining an education in science and mathematics, Archimedes was reportedly employed as an engineer on large-scale irrigation projects on the Nile Delta while in Egypt. During that time, it is likely that he also invented the screw, which was to bear his name for pumping water. After an unknown number of years, Archimedes returned to Syracuse, where he was to stay for the rest of his life. It was a life filled with invention, study, and contemplation. He seems to have been the original absent-minded professor, so absorbed in solving higher thinking problems that he was totally oblivious to everyday concerns. The most famous story that has come down through history that reflects Archimedes' obsessive thought process and his total disregard for societal niceties regarded a time when King Hieron had tasked a goldsmith with commissioning a gold wreath for him. When the job was completed and the wreath presented to the king, he suspected that the goldsmith had stolen some of the gold and replaced it with a cheaper metal. Hieron contacted Archimedes for help. Archimedes puzzled over a way to figure out if the goldsmith had ripped off the king day and night. One day, so the story goes, he was lying in the bath, mulling the problem over. He noticed that the water level rose higher as he sunk deeper into the bath. Then, he had his light bulb moment. He jumped straight out of the bath and ran through the streets, naked to the king's palace, declaring at the top of his voice, Eureka! Eureka! Meaning, I have it! I have it! Having apparently gotten dressed first, he then showed his idea to the king. He placed a piece of gold weighing the same as the wreath in a bowl of water and pointed to the rise in the water level. He then put the wreath in water and showed that the water level was higher than the first time. This proved, he asserted, that the wreath was a greater volume than the gold, even if it was the same weight, showing that the wreath was not pure gold. On the basis of this finding, the offending goldsmith was taken out and executed. This story may or may not have happened. Regardless, it illustrated how Archimedes' obsession with a relatively minor problem led to the discovery of key theoretical findings, in this case, his work on hydrostatics. According to 1st century CE philosopher Plutarch, Aristotle was related to King Hieron II, the ruler of Syracuse. During the Second Punic War, Hieron switched allegiances from Rome to Carthage. This caused the Romans, under Marcus Claudius Marcellus, to lay siege to Syracuse. It should have been an easy operation, 
but the Romans didn't count on Archimedes. Hieron called on the master inventor to devise advanced forms of catapults, stone throwers, and huge arc-like machines that could be swung with great force upon the enemy position. The overwhelming manpower of the Romans eventually saw them conquering the city, but at a far greater cost than they otherwise would have. Archimedes approached every problem from a mathematical point of view. He took the insights of others and advanced upon them. For example, previous mathematicians had found that if a weight is placed on each side of a seesaw, the lighter end must be further away from the pivot for them to balance. But it was Archimedes who showed that the ratio of weights to each other goes down in exact mathematical proportion to the distance from the pivot. He also revealed that every object has a center of gravity, proving it mathematically. Archimedes' fame was largely due to his ability to use mathematical concepts to solve real-life problems. The ship launching and screw inventions are prominent examples. He also produced formulae for working out the volumes and areas of regular shapes, such as spheres and cones. Yet some of Archimedes' discoveries, including the one he was most proud of, were purely theoretical. He proved that the volume of a sphere is two-thirds of the cylinder into which it fits perfectly. The discovery was so profound for him that he asked for a diagram of a sphere inside the cylinder to be inscribed on his tomb, a request that was duly complied with. There is no definitive account of the death of Archimedes. The most well-known version has it that he was working on a mathematical problem involving circles when Syracuse was taken by the Romans. He was ordered by a Roman soldier to appear before Marcellus. True to his nature, he refused, stating that he had to continue working on the problem that was perplexing him. At that, the soldier is said to have run him through with his sword. Reportedly, Marcellus was enraged when he heard of the death of the great inventor, knowing that he had lost a powerful military asset. He is said to have ordered that the body not be desecrated. According to legend, the last words spoken by Archimedes, as the breath was leaving his body, were, Do not disturb my circles. <laughs>